Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Today is Wednesday, April 4th, 2018, and we are excited to bring you a message and presentation from one of the fastest growing authority leaders in case management. Uh, my name is James Jacoby, and I will be your host on today's broadcast. I'm, I've been with medics and in healthcare now for 10 years and have been fortunate to collaborate with all shapes and sizes of healthcare organizations on their initiatives and programs, um, and a lot ha has to do with population health and care management. Um, I currently serve on the board of directors for CMSA in New York City, and I, I do some uh, speaking at conferences. Um, let me introduce you to Deanna. Deanna is the owner of Stay at Home Nurse. If you want to Google that, you can check her out online. She pops right up on the first page. And she is the best-selling author on Amazon for a book called CCM Certification Made Easy, Your Guide to Passing the Certified Case Manager Exam. She has literally helped thousands of nurses taking and pass that exam, and with, an I think, our industry's best rate of 91% pass rate, which is unbelievable. And so we are excited um, to have everyone join today. And if you're listening to the recording, thank you for listening. Um, but we are here to talk about a very hot topic in the industry, and that is the uh, topic of case management. You may be a case manager or you may not be, but hopefully after today's presentation, our goal is for you to have a wealth of understanding about what it is, how you can grow your career into it, and also um, we'll hit some industry questions at the end. Getting a little feedback there. There we go. Thank you. Um, please write down some questions as the presentation goes on, and we will do a Q and A at the end um, with about ten minutes left in the hour. So, without further ado, um, I'm going to welcome Deanna. Deanna, it's so great to have you on today, and we uh, why don't you kick us off with with a little bit about you and the, and the presentation. Okay, James, thanks. Um, I really appreciate everybody's time um, attending this today. I know everybody's busy, and to take time out of your busy day to watch something like this, it really means a lot to me that everybody would um, take time for that. I'm really excited to be sharing with everybody today about case management, and let me know when you're ready for me to begin. We are ready for you, ready to go. Okay, great. We're going to go ahead and get started then. Um, today we're going to talk about what is case management. Um, we want to discuss what it is, who it is for, and who it's not a good fit for. Um, what can you do to break into case management, and how can you thrive as a case manager? So the first thing we're going to talk about is what is case management. And to really talk about that, first we need to talk about what it isn't. And um, if you look for jobs for case managers, you will see correctional case managers as some of the jobs listed. And today we're not going to be talking about that, so if that's what you're here for, I hate to disappoint you. Um, we're going to be talking about medical case management, case management within the healthcare industry. Another thing that case management is not is utilization review. A lot of people think that utilization review and case management are the same thing. Utilization review can be a part of case management, but case management in itself is much broader than just utilization review. Even within the case management industry, there are different ideas about what case management is. A case manager definition for a hospital case manager is different than the rehabilitation case manager, and social workers case managers have a different definition. So today, um, we're going to look at two definitions that will hopefully clarify this, what is a case manager. The first one we're going to look at is a very general, generic definition, but I really like it. This definition is from the Case Management Leadership Coalition, and in 2006, that was over 10 years ago, they got together and looked at all the different definitions of case management throughout the industry, and they decided on this, which I think is really good. Case managers work with people to get the health care and other community services that they need, when they need them, and for the best value. And I think summing it up in a nutshell, that really is what case management is and what case managers do. But I do want to look at another definition, and this is the definition of case management by CMSA, the Case Management Society of America. Um, they cover all different areas of case management, rehabilitation, workers' comp, no matter where 
in the healthcare industry, somebody is a case manager, they set the standards for case management for all case managers. So we're going to look at their definition. And their definition is that case management is a collaborative process of assessment, planning, facilitation, care coordination, evaluation, and advocacy for options and services that meet the individual's and family's comprehensive health needs through communication and available resources to promote patient, status, patient safety, quality of care, and cost-effective outcomes. And that's a lot. <laughs> Again, it's a much more complex and comprehensive than the first definition that we looked at. So we're going to just take a minute just to break that apart. Um, I want us to look at the um, collaborative process. Case managers work with many others, including the family, the caregiver, the patient, and other members of the healthcare team, just to make, name a few. So it really is a collaborative process. Um, also, the assessment part. Case managers perform an initial ongoing assessment to their clients to identify their client's needs, goals, potential or actual barriers that may interfere with the client reaching their goals, and any barriers to following the treatment plan. They also continue to assess on an ongoing basis to identify new barriers that may arise. This assessment is a really important part of the case management, and it's the basis for everything else that is done. Um, it's very different from a traditional medical or nursing assessment as it's very much whole person oriented, including not just the person but their family, their environment, and anything else that can impact their health care. Okay, now we're going to talk about the planning part. Once the client has been assessed and the issues, barriers, or potential barriers were identified, the case manager makes a plan to address and resolve these barriers. And then facilitation and care coordination. Case managers ensure that the right care is provided in the right setting in a timely manner. They coordinate care by multiple providers, arrange for delivery of care, and ensure the safe transitions of care. They also evaluate. Once they initiate this plan of care, they're always evaluating to make sure that it's working for the client. And if it's not, then they go back to the assessment and the planning and the facilitating. And patient advocacy is another really big part of case management. No matter where the case manager works, their primary role is a patient advocate to make sure that the interest of the patient, as the patient sees it, is the primary focus. Okay, so now that we have looked at a few official definitions of case management, I want to just kind of talk a little more generally about what case managers actually do. Case managers help their clients to discover their goals related to their health and health care, and they help them to actually reach those goals. And they do this primarily through education and advocacy. Case managers provide ongoing education to the client and their families regarding the plan of care, their treatment options, medication management, discharge instructions, disease management, community resources, and anything else that they need to learn about to transition through the healthcare system and to reach their goals. They also provide education to other healthcare and service providers so that they understand and respect the goals and the needs of the client. That goes back to the client, um, to the patient advocacy. Okay, um, the rewards in case management don't necessarily come from hands-on care. Rather, they come from helping the patients and their families to resolve problems so that they can transition through the complex healthcare system in a dignified manner and move on with their life and sometimes even with their death. A lot of what they do is MacGyvering. Um, as you know, things are not always simple and spelled out in clear English, so here's step one, here's step two, here's step three. Sometimes we have that, but a lot of times we don't. And the cases that the case managers have are usually the more complex case, cases that are not easily followed and, go, and one thing is not happening after the other as they should. So case managers look at the goals of the client, they look at the resources available, they look at what's lacking between those two, between the resources available and the goals of the client, and they somehow make things happen. The resources available don't always match up exactly with what the patient needs, but sometimes by piecing things together from multiple resources, using resources in a different manner than they were intended, or thinking outside the box, case managers can make things happen. And one 
short story about this is um, I once had a patient who could not afford their medications. Even though you can go to places like Walmart and get medications for $4, when you're on sometimes 15 or 20 medications, some of them are not covered under those $4 programs, people can be spending you know, 100 or more dollars a month on medications, and sometimes on, with somebody on a limited fixed income, that's just not possible. Um, after looking high and low at all these different resources and reaching out to pharmaceutical companies and different organizations, we were able to get a couple things covered, but there was still a huge need. Um, but one thing I was able to do is I was able to find several food pantries in the area, and I was also able to find assistance in paying the client's electric bill. Now, even those are even though those aren't directly related to helping the client pay for their medications, by lowering these expenses, the client was therefore able to use that money to pay for their medications. And they were able to stay out of the hospital and require less, um, they were sick less and healthy more, which was really great. Another thing that case managers do sometimes is they end up playing detective. Um, sometimes things just don't add up. Again, we're getting the, the cases where things aren't going normally, something's wrong, we're not getting the average, the really good cases where things just go smoothly. Um, another story is that we had a patient one time who kept getting admitted um, in CHF, and when we put them on case management, that's how we got them, we put them under case management, reviewing their medications, their medication usage and different things, and found that the patient was always having to take an extra Lasix because they were always having this extra weight gain. and trying to look into what the cause may be. The patient um, was stating how they were following a really strict diet, that they were pretty much on a liquid diet. They would eat oatmeal for breakfast and then have soup, broth soup for lunch and dinner, that they were pretty, they couldn't understand how they were gaining all this weight. Well, we asked them to go, you know, what kind of soup were they eating? Was somebody making it for them? Who was preparing it? And they were going to the store and buying cans of soup. So we asked them to go and look at the sodium content and by playing detective, we're able to find out that the canned soup that they were eating had extensive amounts of sodium in it and was leading to the water weight that they were putting on. And so by making that one change in their diet, they were able to better manage their CHF. We're now going to look at some different places that case managers work, and a lot of the, um, the type of work that case managers do is dependent on where they work. And we're not just going to look at where they work, but also what some types of case management, different types of case management that are done. Um, we always think first of the hospital. And acute care, there is a lot of acute care case managers that do work in hospitals. Other acute care settings they can work in are inpatient rehab, long-term care hospitals, and skilled nursing facilities. In these types of um, facilities, the case manager is usually doing utilization review, but not always. Sometimes there's a, a certain person designated to do utilization review and they're just doing case management. They do do a lot of discharge planning, resource management, um, coordination of care among different departments and team members. They will, especially in like rehab, they will be in charge of coordinating the interdisciplinary care meetings among different um, members of the team. They'll do referrals to outside facilities, to home health, or wherever the patient may go after their facility, and they'll also help to transition in those care, in, in to transition the care to the next provider. Another place that case managers work is insurance companies, and these can be public health insurance programs, like Medicaid programs, Medicare programs. They can be private health insurance programs, such as um, group health insurance, managed care organizations. They can be disability insurance programs, occupational health, and even um, things like other liability, like um, auto insurance and homeowners insurance. A lot of what they do here is a liaison between the providers, the members, and the insurance company, making sure everybody understands what benefits are available and that these benefits are used to the best. Um, they coordinate care between multiple providers. And one of the things I like about working in an insurance company as a case manager is you can really follow the patient all the way through the healthcare system. You may pick them up right after an incident when they're in the hospital. Let's say they had a stroke and you pick them up 
while they're still in the hospital. And you don't discharge that patient until they're back at their um, maximum improvement where you've got them pretty much on their own. So in the hospital where you maybe only see a patient while they're inpatient, or maybe you may check on them a week or two afterwards to make sure everything's going okay, with insurance case management, you're really following through them through the entire healthcare system, and you can really make some significant impacts based on that. A complex case management can be done in a variety of settings. It can be done for insurance companies such as medical insurance, auto insurance. There are also independent case management companies out there that specialize in complex case management. And what these people do is, as we know, life can change in an instant. When somebody has, who's normally healthy, has had very little interaction with the healthcare system, and all of a sudden they have um, a spinal cord injury, um, multiple traumas, a traumatic brain injury, or even a diagnosis of something like some cancers, ALS, a massive stroke, or needing a transplant. When all of a sudden they're thrown into this healthcare system where they really have no knowledge of how to navigate it, case managers can, can be invaluable. Um, a lot of what they do is educate the client. This client doesn't know how to work with multiple providers, um, how to navigate the whole healthcare system, how to advocate for themselves. So you come in and you teach them, you teach them about their benefits, about what to expect, about how long will they be in the hospital, where will they go when they leave the hospital, what kind of care are they going to need when they go home, who's going to care for them. Um, do they have caregivers in their family? Do they have friends? Will they need to hire caregivers? All of these kinds of things, they can help them through resource management, DME needs, um, and they advocate. They can advocate for the patient on the benefit level, um, on the provider level, and sometimes just helping the families and the patient to get used to this new normal or to get back to their old normal. Okay, another fun place that case managers can work is with the OB in um, NICU population. High-risk OB patients, again, these are usually healthy people that never really um, came in contact with the healthcare system before, and now they need to figure out how do they navigate. All of a sudden, they're told that they need to be on bed rest, and they have a two-year-old at home, and anybody who's ever had a two-year-old knows that bed rest and a two-year-old they don't happen at the same time. Um, another thing is if the baby is born early and all of a sudden you have this baby with special needs and they're need to come, going to come home with apnea monitors and oxygen and nebulizers and things that you know nothing about. Um, so this is another place. Sometimes these case managers work for insurance companies. Sometimes they work for the hospitals or sometimes they work for um, public agencies that help these types of people. Um, they do a lot of education. They do a lot of discharge planning. Um, they coordinate home health needs, DME, therapies. Um, and a fun, one of the kind of fun things they get to do is um, at one time there was a, a patient who was an OB patient, she was in preterm labor, and she was ordered to go home on bed rest, but the doctor kept putting her back in the hospital because she was having contractions and she could not maintain bed rest with a small child. Well, the nurse case manager was able to show a cost savings where if they paid for a caregiver to come into the home and help with a two-year-old and to help with you know, feeding and you know, all those types of things that this little child, that it would keep the mother out of the hospital and she could stay home and maintain bed rest, which would be a huge cost savings over the mother staying in the hospital for another six weeks, which was how long she was going to have to wait until she could safely deliver the baby. And the health insurance company saw that that was a huge savings for them and actually covered this as an extra contractual benefit. Okay, palliative care, home care, and hospice care. Um, it's really refreshing to get out of the hospital sometime or out of an institution environment and to work in the home care. This is really a fun place for case managers to work because you get to see the patient in their own environment. And you can really see what's going on with them, what their needs are, not based on just what they're saying or what's being reported, but you can see what's actually going on in the home. Um, the environment that they live in, um, the support that they have or don't have from caregivers and family members. Um, case managers in these settings often combine the role of caregiver with case manager in that they do provide some nursing, hands-on nursing responsibilities. They may do dressing changes, draw blood, do a physical assessment. Um, they may do injections. Um, they may take care of 
permanent catheters, IVs, portacasts, those types of things. Um, they're often the liaison between the provider and the patient. They're the eyes and the ears for the doctor. If the patient is truly homebound and has a hard time getting out, then the, ca the case manager will be reporting back to the doctor, letting them know what they're seeing and reporting on their assessment. They provide a lot of education to, the to both the patient and the family, and they assess for any additional needs or services or agencies that may need to intervene, such as Meals on Wheels or something like that to help the client. Okay, workers' compensation is a little bit different than a lot of the ones we've talked about. Um, in workers' compensation case management, the focus is on getting the patient back to work, and they do this by collaborating with the employer and the employee. They often facilitate communication between the employer, the claims adjuster, the attorneys, the union representatives, the state administrative agencies, and the providers. Um, they also coordinate care between multiple healthcare providers. They monitor the progress. They perform job analysis to find out if the patient or the client is going to be able to go back to the same job or will they need a modification. And they help the injured worker to understand their coverage and their benefits. Sometimes they also will find resources that are available in the community that may not be covered under their workers' compensation. Okay, now we're going to move on and we're going to look at what qualities and traits and skills make a good case manager. Um, experience is probably one of the most important factors, although I think all of these are important. Um, there's just nothing that can be said for experience. No, you don't need 25 years of experience. This is just the, um, the slide that I found that I thought represented that. Most case managers, if they have um, five years of experience in a clinical setting, can usually do a case management job pretty well. And the reason is case managers need to have a thorough understanding of how the healthcare system works in practice, not just theory. Um, for any of you that have worked in the healthcare industry for an extended period of time, you know that theory and practice are two different things. The way we you know, the way that we learn to do things, and then once you're on the floor and you have to figure out how to do things can be totally different. So for this reason, a firm clinical foundation is a must. You have to know how the different um, agencies work with each other, how the different departments work with each other, how things really work. Um, and it's really not an entry-level position, but rather an area of expertise that requires the knowledge and skills that are accumulated and mastered only through years of experience in a practice setting. Okay, case managers also need excellent communication skills. Um, communication is an essential part of case management. Communication is how we conduct our assessments, how we advocate for our patients, how we negotiate, how we document, how we educate our clients, how we transition our clients. So without good communication skills, a case manager really can't be successful at their job. Case managers also need to be able to communicate respectfully and effectively with all members of the healthcare team and with the client, their family, and other stakeholders. Okay, interviewing skills. It's really important that the case manager be able to obtain information that's needed, and not just the superficial information of, oh yeah, everything's fine at home, my family will take good care of me, I have nothing to worry about. They really need to get in there and dive deep and find out what's going on, especially in cases like we talked about where I'm following my diet, I'm doing everything that I can. When we look back at that detective slide I had, you know, you have to really be able to interview and dive deep and get to the meat of what's going on to be a good case manager. Strong computer skills. Today's case managers must have strong computer skills because the, the computer is pretty much replacing the stethoscope, um, except for a few rare cases where the case manager is performing their nursing, you know, skilled nursing such as doing an assessment like we talked about with maybe hospice or home care case management. Most case managers are doing a lot on the computer these days. And they're using the computer for client selection, for a portion of their assessments, for documentation, for research, for communication. Um, they use software that finds clients at high risk and that could benefit from the case management services. They use computers to access the client record. They use computers to document the assessment, the interventions, the response, and everything else that they do. They use things like Google to research diseases that they're not familiar with. They also use it to find resources that maybe they don't know about. Sometimes you just have to find a resource that um, is out there for something that's rare or different. And yes, we do use Google. And then there's software. You need to 
um, software to be able to send and receive faxes, to send and receive documentation, to determine lengths of stays. So computer skills are a must. Um, also just basic email skills and um, internet skills. Okay, organization. <laughs> um, we really, a good case manager has to organize, prioritize, and manage tasks. They will have a lot of things to perform independently every day on a daily basis. And they need to be able to find their resources, their files, their phone numbers. And if you work on a desk like that, that's just going to not happen. You're not going to be able to work in a timely manner. So they really do need to be able to be organized, have an organized place where they have a list of all the DME companies, of all the companies that will take Medicaid patients, um, phone numbers for contacts, phone com numbers for referrals, phone numbers for caregivers. So um, there's a you do need to be organized, well organized, able to prioritize because you're going to um, – Case managers have a lot of activities and tasks that they are responsible for. And if they're not able to prioritize which are the most important, they'll soon feel very overwhelmed and um, they won't feel that they can do their job well. And then time management skills. Case managers have a lot to do and are often up against a lot of time constraints. So having excellent time management skills really can help you to be more satisfied in your job. Okay, they need to be flexible and adaptable. Things are always changing. It's good to start the day with a plan, but things will come up and the case manager needs to be flexible and adapt to change. An example is you have just spent two days getting everything set up, getting a patient accepted into a skilled nursing facility near their home, um, transportation to the facility, everything's all set up and ready to go. And then the morning of discharge, you find out the patient is refusing to go to the skilled nursing facility. They've decided they want to go home instead. And now you need to arrange for durable medical equipment to go home with the patient. You need to talk to the family, make sure that they're going to be able to provide the support needed, get them to um, the doctor's appointments, because now they're not going to be seen at the SNF by the doctor, and that they have, um, you need to set up home health. So as you can see, flexibility is very important in case management. Okay, you need to be able to work independently. Um, case managers need to know what needs to be done and how to do it. There's always going to be occasions when you need help or input from others, but basically you're going to have to figure out what needs to be done and how to do it most of the time on your own without being told or with direction from somebody else. And critical thinking skills, you need to be able to um, reason, organize, um, analyze information, and find solutions that will help you to get through the different, like I said, back to the MacGyvering, when you have a patient who needs something but there's not really resources out there, how do you find resources that can maybe make up for those resources or piece things together? Um, you're often going to get a large amount of information and you have to go through that information and determine what's relevant and what's not relevant. You also need to understand the problems or the potential problems before they even occur. You need to be able to formulate a plan and implement that plan to resolve those problems or to make sure that those um, potential problems never become problems. And teaching skills. Um, I can't one of the things I love best about case management is the ability to teach. You get to teach these patients and their families how to take care of themselves, how to manage their disease states, how to really um, take ownership and navigate the healthcare system. And it's really rewarding when you see somebody that came in and they were scared and they didn't know how they were going to do anything, and then you discharge them and they are just they're flying. They're they know what, exactly what they need to do. They're taking ownership of their disease or their um, health issue or their whatever's going on with them, and they're navigating the healthcare system and they're doing what they need to do. So patient teaching is really a fun part of case management. Okay, and you need to be a good negotiator. Um, you negotiate with service providers. You negotiate with patients, um, sometimes to get them to understand and do what they need to do. You negotiate with payer sources, with physicians, with agencies. So good negotiation skills where you can find help to develop win-win situations for everybody um, is really important. And 
materials. You know, case management, you're dealing with a lot of people and you need to be the type of person that people come to and not the kind of pe person that people run from. And I say that with a smile on my face, but we all know those type of people that we've worked with before or come in contact with before that as soon as they come on the unit, you roll your eyes and you're like, oh no, you don't wanna have to deal with them. Either they're negative or nothing's ever going to work or they don't talk to people with respect or they expect everybody else to do for them. You really have to have good interpersonal skills. You have to, people have to want to work with you when you're in case management. Um, case managers don't work in a vacuum. They're consistently working with others. And you have to be the kind of person that people do want to work with. So if people describe you as a team player, as caring, as a good collaborator, empathetic, good listener, encouraging, um, flexible, trustworthy, motivating, these are the type of people that we want to work with as a case manager. Well, as, that we want as a case manager. Um, there's no room for negativity. You're working with patients that have had catastrophic things happen to them, and you need to be able to see the possibilities so that you can help them to get to those possibilities. If you don't even think it's possible that that patient's going to walk again, then how are you going to get, the, um, get them into a rehab and get them the care that they need? Um, so do people often come to you and consult with you and ask them to help them get through maybe problems with patients that they can't seem to get through? Then that would mean you'd be a good case manager. And um, also, do you have a way of developing rapport with your clients and your coworkers? Do the clients, do, do patients ask to have you back again as their nurse? Um, do other members of the healthcare team want to work with you? Then you would be a very good case manager. Okay, you have to have strong ethics, value, and trust because you're working independently a lot. You have a lot of information that you get from the clients and their families, and you need to be a very trustworthy person. Um, this is really a non-negotiable. Advocacy, you have to be able to advocate for your client's needs. You have to be able to convey the client's desires to the providers, and you need to be able to teach the client to advocate for themselves. And finally, personal development. As a case manager, you never stop learning. You need to be the one who can find the resources, find new things that are out as soon as they're out, to um, understand the benefits that are available, to understand um, new laws like Obamacare and things like that that come up, where you have to be the one who understands how that's gonna impact your patients, your clients, and the healthcare team. Okay, so who is case management not the right fit for? Um, you know, I like to think it's for everybody, but we all know everything is not for everybody. And so I would say case management, if you're an adrenaline junkie, if you love to be on the code team, if you love to work in the trauma ER, if you just thrive on that adrenaline and you need it every day, you may not do well in case management because although there's a different kind of an urgency, it's not the same as those adrenaline rushes you get when there's a code or a trauma come in. Um, if you're looking for an easy job, a lot of people think that they're going to move to case management because they're going to sit behind a desk and make phone calls all day. That's really not a good representation of what case management is. You're working really hard to get everything ready for that patient so that when they go home, they have it. You're working really hard to work with the family members and the caregivers to make sure they understand how to take care of that patient and not to burn out. It is a really it's a rewarding job, but it's not an easy job. Um, if you want to do hands-on patient care, if you love scrubbing into the OR, if you love starting IVs, if you love that touch, you may not want to do case management. Um, that was hard for me. That was one of the hardest things was leaving that, ask, that area of patient care, but it made up for it in the reward of getting to follow a patient through from the beginning all the way to the end. But that is one thing that if you really like that hands-on care that you may not get with case management. Um, you do, if you don't have a true desire to help others, then you will not be a, case a good case manager. Um, you really need to want to help others, have a strong desire to do that because that's basically what you're doing all day. If you don't enjoy working with the public, you will not enjoy work working as a case manager because you're gonna be dealing with doctors, DME companies, patients, their families, 
you have to want to deal with these people. Um, if you can't communicate well, then if people tend to misunderstand what you're saying a lot and don't, and for some reason you have trouble communicating, this is not a good job for you. Um, if people run when they see you coming, you're probably not going to be a good case manager. Um, if you like to be told what to do every day, if you like a job where you're just given a list of tasks and you need to go through and do those and complete them and you can check them on the list, this is probably not for you. You really need to be able to decide for yourself what is important that day and what you need to do and when you need to do it. And also, if you like a routine, case management is not routine. Every day there's a new issue, problem, or something coming up, and um, this is not something that you go in and, and do the same routine every day. So now we're going to look at how you can break into case management. Um, as with any other time you're looking for a job, networking is probably the best thing that you can do. <clears throat> so network, look at the past places that you've worked, people that you went to school with, um, your instructors, your managers. Let everybody know that you want to get into case management, that you're looking for this new job. Visit the case management department of your hospital. Ask if you can shadow them with them for a day. See what they really do. Um, Help the case managers when they come to your department. If you can ask them, hey, what would it? Be, how would I? How can I make your job easier? What information do you need? What can I do to help you make your job easier? Another great way to break into case management. And then, of course, you have James and the people at Medex here that can help with helping you find a case management job. Um, also, join a network like your local chapter of the CMSA, attend national conferences for case management. Um, there's a lot of them out there. And when you meet people and you get to know them, you make relationships, and that's a great way to, to get into case management. Also, optimizing your resume, um, or CV as they call it now, um, the skill sets that you need to be a case manager are not exactly the same skill sets that you would use at the bedside, so you really need to change your focus on your resume. Um, look at the qualities and traits that we talked about a few minutes ago and showcase those. And don't forget your LinkedIn profile. Um, People do look at LinkedIn these days. They look at your social media. So make sure you have a professional photo on there and make sure that you highlight on there the things that you do that could be that could transfer into a case management position. And then continuing education. This can take many forms. Um, if certified case managers have a very specific continuing education that they get called CCM. And to get those CCM credits, they usually give them for social workers, nurses, and CCM credits. So you can take those little, those continuing education classes will work towards your registered nurse or your social work license, but then it'll also show a potential employer that you've actually been learning and things that will help you in case management. Some of those things might be like motivational interviewing, value-based care, things like that that can help you in a case management position. I'm also taking in courses in case management. There's everything from certificate courses to college level courses on case management. And the prices kind of vary the same. You can take certificate courses, which are more low end prices. College, going back to college, as we all know, um, is much more of an expense. And these can teach you the skills and the techniques that you need to be a good case manager so that you can better convey that on your resume. And you can actually start working as a case manager, knowing things and not having to go through the on the job training that you would normally have to go through. To thrive as a case manager. For those of you out here that are already case managers, or, or for those of you who will become case managers, we want to talk about how to really enjoy your job as a case manager, getting a great job that's a good fit for you. Um, certification, to me, is one of the best things that I ever did in my case management career. When I got certified, the studying that re was required to pass that certification helped me to be a better case manager. I learned about things that I normally would not have had to learn about in my role, and it helped me to better advocate for my clients, to better work with um, other members of the healthcare team, and just really, it was a really good thing that I did both for myself and for my clients. Um, there are many different types of certification, and the, each one of them has their own qualifications. There's pluses and minuses with all of them, but I would definitely say look into getting certified. Also, join and get involved in your professional organizations. You learn a lot through them. Um, joining a local CMSA chapter, and not just joining, but getting involved in them, you know, becoming 
um, a board member so that you can actually have an impact on what's happening at those local chapters. Atta attending national conferences, you learn a lot, you make a lot of good relationships, and it'll really help you to move up the ladder in the field of case management. And then within your own organization, there's some things you can do. Um, do your policies and procedures align with the standards of practice and the accreditation standards? Take a look at that. And if they don't, maybe you can volunteer to head a, a committee that will review and revise your, um, your policies and procedures. So there's things that you can do like that that are really going to make you stand out as a case manager and help you move up the, the ladder. And also advocating. Um, we advocate for our patients every day as a case manager, but there are things that you can do outside of just your your own little um, organization or your own clients. But you can advocate on local, national levels for clients and things that you're passionate about. Um, if you deal with maybe something like cancer patients or childhood cancer patients, you may want to advocate for more funding or better services or something like that for those. So those are just some things that you can do to grow in your profession of case management. Um, I've talked a lot, and now I would really like to hear some feedback from you. So I'm going to hand it back over to James, and if we have any questions, um, I'd love to go ahead and take some, a few minutes to answer them. Deanna, thank you so much. <laughs> that was an incredible wealth of information that you presented. Um, I really appreciate you going through that. <clears throat> so at this time, if you have a, a chat bar at your, at your desktop, you can type in the questions if you'd like to ask a question. I'm going to type myself in right now to say feel free to post questions here. And while you guys think about any questions you may want to ask, we did get a couple ahead of the webinar um, that we'll start out with. So the first question we have for you, Deanna, is what are some things to look for in a case management course if I want to get that continuing education that you talked about? Okay, um, that's a great question. One of the things that you want to look for is who's doing the course. Um, of course, if you're looking at a college, you want to make sure that it's a reputable college that's providing the continuing education. Um, also, is it are there case managers that are instructing it and developing it, or is it an organization that is really has no ties to case management. So you want to make sure that they're, that the actual person who's providing it um, has knowledge and expertise in case management. Um, I would also look for something that has some, not just theory, but actually allows you to practice and learn about the things that you're going to need to do. Um, theory is great, but we all know that when we learn a lot of theory and we don't have the practice behind it to um, to really put it in place, we forget it really quick. So um, something that allows you to ask questions that is not just an online course where you are taking in the information but not able to um, ask questions or get help and support where needed. Those are some things that I would look at. Great. Thanks so much. Um, the second question is, which case management certification is the best? I think there is a couple out there. Is that, is that not true? Yeah, there are actually several case management certifications, and the answer to that is really individual to the person. Um, and I always tell people to look at where they are now and where they want to be in the future. And where they are now will determine which ones they actually are eligible to sit for. Um, if they work in a hospital, if they are a nurse, if they're a social worker, that will all impact which ones they're eligible to sit for. Um, and also which area, if they work in rehab, there are certain ones that are specific to rehab. The one that I decided on was the CCM, the Certified Case Manager. And the reason is I knew that in the future, I was working um, insurance-based case management, and I knew I wanted to work strictly from home. And all the positions that I looked for that, wanted, that um, hired at-home case managers required the CCM. So since I was getting a certification, I decided that would be the one I would get so that it would help me to get the position that I wanted. So when I say look at where you want to be, um, that's what I mean by that. So look at where you want to. If you're going to stay in rehab, then you may want to get one that is for rehab case managers. But if you have any idea that you may want to move to a different case management position or specialty, then you may want to get something that's more for all case managers, such as the CCM certification. Wonderful, thank you. <clears throat> so going back to what you said before about 
uh, what kind of experience you need as a nurse to, to become a case manager. Could you expand on that? What type of nursing experience do you actually need to transition into a, a case manager role? Okay, that's also a good question. Um, if you are going to do something like high-risk OB or um, neonatal intensive care case management, then I would say having that type, a lot of that background is really good. So if you've worked for, you know, five years, ten years in that specifically, that'll really help you out. If you're going to do something more like complex case management, then having um, a good med surge background, an ICU background, um, working in a trauma, neuro, anything like that will help you with that. And sometimes having instead of working in one area for a long period of time, some of those positions actually are better if you've worked in a variety of places so that you have a better understanding of how healthcare works across the continuum. Um, so it really depends on the type of case management you're going to do. I think there's room, there's a type of case management for just about every type of nurse out there. So if you've worked on a transplant unit, there are transplant case managers. Um, if you've worked in a trauma center, there are complex case managers. If you've worked in rehab, there are case managers that deal with rehab. So I think um, pretty much any experience you have, including meds, a good med surge background, um, even, even if you've worked in psych, there are behavioral health case managers. So I think just about any nursing background will help you. Wonderful. <laughs> you know, one, one other question I had, and it looks like we got a couple coming in here too, is I, I really like the way you you know, portrayed what what are qualities of a good case manager and then what are some qualities that maybe would not make you a good case manager? And there maybe there's some folks on this that are listening like, huh, I don't know, like I have some of both maybe. <laughs> Should I be doing this? Or or maybe if I'm not a case manager yet and maybe I'm, I'm not really thinking about some things until I heard them today, can I be trained to be a case manager? Do you ever see nurses that want to be trained into it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of nurses... There's, there are some skills that you just have to have. Like if you don't like helping people, that's kind of a hard skill to develop or I guess a hard trait to develop. But a lot of the skills like the communication skills um, and negotiation skills, those can all be developed and can be trained. Um, I think you probably know that we have – we are developing a training program right now, and that's one of the things that we're doing is we're focusing on motivational interviewing, negotiation techniques, communication really heavily so that a nurse that maybe feels like they don't have a real good handle on everything, because nobody's going to be, you know, in the door, everything wrapped up in a bow. And the things that we do at the bedside are a little bit different, but they can be adapted really easily to the case management role. And that's why I think nurses, um, it's such a good fit for nurses, is that the things that you do, and I think the things that a lot of nurses like to do, we wish we had more time to teach our patients. Well, guess what? As a case manager, we need to teach our patients. And we like advocating for our patients, and we get to do that. So there's a lot of um, a lot of the skills that you already have as a bedside case manager can easily be adapted and you can easily be trained to be a case manager if you have the core quality traits of wanting to help others and um, things like that. Perfect, thank you. So we have a question from the audience coming in. One one person is saying um, they're tra they're actually training for the CCM exam. They're taking it in three days from now, and they want to know. You know, what other resources are there out there um, that could be maybe some practice tests that you recommend to pre prepare for that test? Oh, that's a good question, and I get that one a lot. Um, so we do have a Facebook group, and in the Facebook group, every day, Monday through Friday, we post one question, and then the following day, we put the answer to that question, and then we post a new question. So that's a free resource that's available. Um, if you're taking it in three days, it would be really hard to do that. Um, CCMC. You can go to their website and through Prometrics, they have a practice test that you can get and have access to for 24 hours. So for somebody that's taking the test in three days, you may want to use that resource. And then um, Datacam actually has a really good, I like their, um, their practice tests. They're probably my favorite because 
you can do it in two different modes. You can do the practice mode, which is like a practice test where you're actually taking the test and see how you do, but you can also do it in a study mode. And I really like that because you answer one question and then you see if you got it right or not. And if you didn't get it right, you can look at the rationale and find out why you didn't get it right. Um, so that would probably be where I would direct anybody who wants to do some practice tests before the exam. Wonderful. We got some fans from your Facebook group on here in the chat. Oh, good. <laughs> I love uh, my Facebook group. <laughs> if, you, if you are on Facebook and, and, you, and you're wondering, if you've never been in a Facebook group and you want to know what it's like, Deanna runs an excellent group. Um, you can send her a message and, and she will get you in. There's only just a few people in your group. How, what are you at right now with, with your, your following? We have um, 5,000 something hundred, so it's a pretty big group. Um, and all they have to do really is when they're on Facebook, go to case manager, just do a search for case managers community. You'll find, and there may be another, there may be more than one, but we're the one with 5,000 members. You ask to join. When you ask to join, we're going to ask you, there's three questions that will pop up. Please answer the questions because we do get spammers in there, so we try very hard. Like we ask you, are you a case manager? If you say yes, we're going to let you in. If you say no, we're going to ask you why you want to join our group. And we're going to um, actually, my, my partner, Avi, he looks at all of those that are not and decides whether or not we're going to let them in because we have a lot of people that just want to go in and sell you something. <laughs> Gotcha. No, it's, it's a very well-run group. Um, another person's asking uh, if you were able to send the study guide that goes with your book that you have. Yeah, actually, if you have the book, you simply go to page XXI, Roman numeral 13, and the instructions are right there, and you can get it instantly just by, um, it'll tell you what, where to go. You just go to a website and tell us where to send it. When you put your email address in, make it a a personal email address, not a work email address, because you are getting a live link to a downloadable book, and most employers don't let that go through. But um, just go to page XII of the book, and it'll show you exactly how to download that workbook. Perfect. And, and can you repeat that, that test? I think you said it was DataCam. Uh, what was the yeah, test that you were referring to? DataCam, D A. T-A-C-H-E-M, I believe. And if you Google that, you'll find it. Um, I really like theirs. I, I kind of did it myself just to kind of keep myself up to date <laughs> and um, make sure that I know what I'm talking about. And, and also, anything that we recommend, we are always um, test out prior to recommending it. And I really did like that one. I thought they had a really good, um, really good way of studying and actually learning. Now, I will say, in regarding that, I do have a lot of people who say, oh my gosh, I saw questions in on there that aren't in your book, or either they'll say, I was studying on Datacam, and there's stuff in your book that wasn't on Datacam. You, people need to remember that these are two different things. Like, you're asked, you have to know, have a wide range of knowledge, and there is no one place that's going to be able to teach you anything. It's teaching you what you need to know. So um, don't get discouraged by that. Just you, That's how you have to use your, your problem solving and your reasoning and your critical thinking. Because if you only got asked questions that you knew the answer to, and that's all you've ever practiced, you really, you're going to be asked questions on the test. I guarantee you that you're not going to know the answer to because it's purposefully made that way, and they want to see how you can problem solve and reason. So don't get upset when you see stuff that's not on there. Say, good, this is a chance for me to practice my reasoning skills and my problem solving skills. Great. Well, I think that's it for the questions. Um, Deanna, we want to thank you again for joining us today, and thank you for your, your material. It was excellent. And if you have any more questions, that you're, um, if you're watching this, uh, feel free to shoot us an email. Our contact information is, is on the uh, page right now. If you can't see what we're talking about, don't worry. We have a recording that will be sent to you in the next uh, 24 to 48 hours, so you can go back and watch us if you need to get some information. Okay, thank you. It was really nice. I appreciate you having me on, and I appreciate everybody sticking with us for this hour and um, listen to me talk. <laughs> <laughs> You're very welcome. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.